the 90s. What a great time to be alive. Imagine, if you will, sitting down to your morning coffee, turning on your home computer to read the day's news. There's a revolution going on in rec rooms, offices, and classrooms around the world. Technological advancements were on the rise, growing faster than ever before. Music was arguably the best it had been in years. Television ruled the home, and Saturday morning cartoons were more popular than ever, with ABC, NBC, CBS, and Fox all having regular cartoon lineups for kids to enjoy. At the time, there were only two or three cable channels directed at kids 24-7, Nickelodeon, Disney, and Cartoon Network. But pretty soon, there would be other networks which would jump on the bandwagon and bring cartoons to the public. The WB, later the CW, USA Family Channel, which would turn into Fox Family, then ABC Family, and it's got new names just about every year. And TBS would become the C-list of children's entertainment, with the WB eventually taking its place alongside the top four. During this time, superhero cartoons, or animated series as they're more passionately referred to, became more and more popular. Okay, let me step back a minute. Superhero cartoons have always been popular, but they were more of a Saturday morning action sitcom than animated adventures. Let me explain. Superhero cartoons like Superman, Batman, Super Friends, and the like were usually produced by Hanna-Barbera or Filmation, two of the largest animation companies of the time. While Marvel superhero cartoons like Spider-Man and His Amazing Friends were produced by Deke and Marvel Productions. It's during this time that Hanna-Barbera paved the way for new and exciting superheroes created specifically for Saturday morning television. Heroes like Space Ghost, Birdman and the Galaxy Trio, Blue Falcon and Dynamite, and more were instant hits. After decades of action sitcom stylings for superhero cartoons, Batman the Animated Series debuted and changed the landscape. Many fans often cite Batman the Animated Series as spearheading this new style of superhero cartoons. However, this is only partially correct. Pride of the X-Men would premiere in 1989, but it was short-lived and eventually transformed into the 1992 X-Men Animated Series. It would be the years between that would actually become the most important for superhero cartoons, but we'll dive into that here in a bit. During this time, environmental activism was at an all-time high. People, and by people I mean mainly young people, who were the children of the hippie movement of the 70s, became more and more environmentally aware. This became a popular agenda for politics as well, mainly among Democrats. Ted Turner's TBS jumped on this by combining two of the most popular topics of the time, environmental issues and superheroes. Captain Planet and the Planeteers debuted on September 15, 1990, and was produced by Turner Program Services and Deke Entertainment. Turner drew great inspiration from 80s cartoons, which usually had a moral at the end. However, Captain Planet and the Planeteers took this to a completely new level by not only giving each episode a moral, but teaching kids about the environment and our planet's ecosystem throughout the entirety of each and every episode. The Captain Planet series can be divided into two parts. Captain Planet and the Planeteers, which was more lighthearted and was kind of a bridge between the action sitcoms of the uh, 70s and 80s and the darker animated series of the 90s and today. Captain Planet and the Planeteers would air from September 15, 1990 until December 5th, 1992 and broadcast 113 episodes. The success of more mature-natured animated series like Batman and X-Men earlier in 92 caused showrunners of Captain Planet to rethink their popular show in order to retain viewers. It was during this time that a sequel series went immediately into development. Produced by Hanna-Barbera and Turner Program Services, The New Adventures of Captain Planet debuted in September of 1993 and ran until May 11, 1996. It should be noted that at this time Hanna-Barbera was acquired by Turner in 1991. Keeping with the style introduced by Batman the Animated Series just a year earlier, the new series became slightly more mature and dove into darker stories. During the production company Switch, it was broadcast on TBS Sunday Morning TV Block alongside fellow Hanna-Barbera cartoons such as SWAT Cats and Two Stupid Dogs. The voice cast for Captain Planet and the Planet Heroes remained the same throughout both versions of the series. It was only the voice of Gaia, the Spirit of the Earth, whose voice actor was changed from the main cast. The character of Gaia was voiced by Whoopi Goldberg during the original series and former Lois Lane Margot Kidder from 1993 until 96. 
Gaia is a beautiful, mature woman who guards peace and harmony on the planet. She's essentially Mother Nature or Mother Earth in the series and the creator of Captain Planet. It was actually rare for Gaia and Captain Planet to share screen time in the series since she normally remains on Hope Island. This would be just one of many times in which Whoopi would work with her longtime friend LeVar Burton, who you guys might remember starred alongside her in Star Trek The Next Generation. Burton voiced Kwame, the leader of the Planeteers who possessed the ring with the power of Earth and hailed from Ghana, Africa. Joey DiDio voiced the hot-headed American firewielder, Wheeler. Kath Soucy voiced Linka, who controlled the power of wind. Originally, Linka was stated as being from the Soviet Union, but in the second series, after the collapse of the Soviet Union, her home was changed to Eastern Europe. It should also be noted that during the original series, Wheeler constantly tried to gain the attention of teammate Linka, who usually seemed repulsed by his attempts. But in the secondary series, the two did eventually grow a lot closer and developed a relationship. The controller of the water power was Guy, who hailed from Asia and was voiced by Janice Kawaii. The heart of the team was Mati from the Brazilian Amazon. Voiced by Scott Menville, Mati didn't have any elemental power like the others, but instead used the power of heart, which allowed him to communicate with animals. When situations arose that the Planeteers couldn't handle on their own, they combined their powers by raising their rings to the sky and shouting their respected power to create Captain Planet. The Captain was voiced by David Coburn. The series was known just as much for its villains as it was for its heroes. Among these villains was Dr. Blight, a scientist who often experiments in various ways to take over the planet with technology and chemicals. The scar on the left side of her face is a side effect from her attempt to experiment on herself to make the perfect human. Blight's first appearance was in the episode Deadly Ransom and has been voiced by both Meg Ryan and Mary Kay Bergman. Blight's partner is that of the computer program Mal, who is voiced by David Rappaport and then later by Tim Curry. It should be noted that Blight and Mal's relationship seems to be romantic. However, it's hinted at that Blight has a secret relationship with Luton Plunder. Speaking of Luton Plunder, voiced by James Coburn and Ed Gilbert, considers himself a suave businessman who rarely gets his hands dirty. One of the more famous eco-villains is that of Hoggish Greedly. Not only one of the more famous, but actually the first to encounter Captain Planet and the Planeteers. Voiced by Ed Asner, Greedly has a pig-like appearance. Another animal-like eco-villain is that of Verminous Scum, voiced by Jeff Goldblum in his first five appearances, and then by Maurice Lamarck. Scum is a large humanoid mutant rat determined to take over the Earth. Sly Sludge is a waste management villain who often has get-rich-quick schemes. Voiced by Martin Sheen and later Jim Cummings, Sludge eventually reforms and gives up polluting after realizing that money can be made in recycling. One of only three superpowered eco-villains, Duke Nukem, who is voiced by Dean Stockwell and Maurice Lamarck, can generate radiation which he fires from his hands. Nukem's sidekick, Lead Suit, voiced by Frank Welker, is a weak, bumbling villain who requires a radiation suit in order to be near Nukem. The last of the main eco-villains is that of Zarm, the spirit of war and destruction. Zarm was voiced by Sting, David Warner, and Malcolm McDowell. Zarm was once the spirit of Earth before Gaia, but the gods became aware of his true nature and removed him from his role, exiling him from the planet Earth. Finally, we come to Captain Pollution, who actually only appeared in four episodes and was also voiced by David Coburn. Created by Dr. Blight, who duplicated the Planeteer's rings as the Rings of Destruction. The five rings were presented to eco-villains Duke Nukem, Sly Sludge, Verminous Scum, and Luton Plunder. Originally, the rings were just tools to fight the Planeteers, but Mal observed that the five could combine their powers in the same way as the Planeteers. The Rings of Destruction are smog, deforestation, toxics, super radiation, and hate. The series, both its original version and its sequel series, are known specifically for being environmentally conscious. So much so that all merchandise which was produced to promote the series was made by completely recycled material. This caused several of the companies producing the Captain of the Planet themed merchandise to completely overhaul their production in order to manufacture the products. 
also founded in 1991 by Barbara Pyle when she negotiated a percentage of the show's merchandising revenue to empower young people, was the Captain Planet Foundation. The CPF allowed schools and organizations to present environmental projects to the foundation in order to receive seed money to grow their ideas. The CPF, however, was shut down by Time Warner in 2001 due to a merger with AOL. However, Laura and Rutherford Seidel worked with Time Warner to transition the corporate foundation into a public charity of the same name. In 2007, the CPF acquired the rights to both Captain Planet series, and the board is chaired to this day by Laura, who is actually the daughter of Ted Turner. The series dealt with a number of issues, not just environmental issues. The episode Mind Pollution from 1991 dove into the dangers of drug abuse. The episode A Formula for Hate dealt directly with the HIV AIDS pandemic, both of which were highly unusual for the time. Over the years, several attempts have been made to create a film adaptation for the series. In 1996, Nick Boxer and Barbara Pyle wrote a film adaptation which was entitled Planet. In 2001, Michael Reeves revised the concept as Dark Planet. The story was far darker than the series and set in a post-apocalyptic time period. But the script was lost due to a merger of Turner and Warner Brothers. It had reached the design stage before being abandoned. Other attempts were made in 2007, 2011, and 2013, but none of them saw any fruit. October of 2016, Paramount Pictures and Leonardo DiCaprio's Apian Way began development on a new movie and is currently in negotiations with Jonah Matt and Glenn Powell to write the script. On October 9, 2017, David Coburn and LeVar Burton reprised their roles as Captain Planet and Kwame on the episode The Power Is Yours of OKKO OK Let's Be Heroes on Cartoon Network. That's it for this episode of Hero History, my friends. If you're new to the channel and enjoyed this video, please subscribe so you stay up to date on all our videos. Until next time, my friends, I'm Shannon for Comageddon TV. The power is yours.